Roll Call. Listen Up. April 17, 2019 by Anna Von Reitz. You are 1. A living man, naturally having a 2. Lawful person, your proper name, and living on the land and soil of 3. Your state of the union. What happens is that you are 1. Deliberately misidentified when you are a baby and presumed to be a British territorial United States citizen, this then 2. allows the municipal government to also get into the act and presume that you might also be a citizen of the United States, all this because your parents didn't know and were not told that they needed to record your birth event and your proper name as that of an American state national instead. You are undeclared, so that allows them to tell lies about you and make presumptions about your identity and political status. So, instead of there being evidence of a living man standing on the land jurisdiction of a state of the union, doing business as a lawful person named John Mark Doe, there is only evidence of a legal person, a British United States citizen, operating as John Mark Doe. The problem is that when you look at the proper name, you can't tell if it is a lawful person or a legal person, and thanks to the registration process they put in place, it has to be presumed that you are acting as a legal person and as a British territorial United States citizen until you take action to provide contrary evidence on the public record. That's why we do what we do. But there is another layer to the scam. Once you are presumed to be a British territorial United States citizen and presumed to be acting as a legal person, you lose all your constitutional protections. The municipal United States government then gets in the act and confers a straw man persona upon you as well. This results in the existence of John Mark Doe, an infant decedent estate, and John M. Doe, a public transmitting utility, and John Doe, a pauper having interest in the Public Charitable Trust PCT, and you don't know a thing about any of this. It's all just legal chicanery and lies and deliberate falsification of records and non-disclosed adhesion contracts being exercised against babies in their cradles and innocent people who are never given any disclosure about these practices and presumptions. When you sign up and register for selective service to go into the military services, you are already regarded as being a chattel of the British territorial United States government which just conveniently happens to run the military for us, so they pick up their own franchise and conscript or enlist him depending on whether it is done by draft or is voluntary. Either way, you committed John Mark Doe, the presumed legal person, to this fate and gave him away when you registered him with selective service. Next, after enlistment, they declare you to be dead, missing in action, and issue a municipal identity, a nom de guerre, which can be any variety of your name spelled out in all capitals, most commonly, it appears in military records as Doe, John Mark. He has no rights, he is literally a slave under the rules of their stilted, dishonest, vicious game. He is an enemy combatant. He is officially legally dead, so whatever they do to him doesn't matter. And this is how they gain plenary control to abuse you while you are in the service. This is how they use our sons and daughters in the military to conduct experimental drug tests and inject them with diseases and vaccines and use them as test subjects to test new mind control programs and devices. Doe, John Mark, is totally expendable for any reason or no reason at all. And nobody is told any of this outrageous garbage going into the service or coming into this world that these madmen and criminals have created for us. After you leave the service, they just continue to presume upon you and continue to presume that you owe them service as a kind of military government quasi-civilian, that is, if you don't formally give them notice otherwise. This is why all veterans are advised to give notice via letter directly to the head of their former branch of service that you have returned home to your birthright political status as an American state national. Where is the only power point against all this? Right back where you began, as a baby. Your lawful person is one of the people of your state of the union, and your state of the union is party to the constitutions, able to enforce every jot. Your lawful person is an actual civilian and your state, not any, state of state, is the actual civilian government doing business as a member of the United States of America, unincorporated, that these jackdaws are supposed to protect against all enemies foreign and domestic. If you never understood all of this before in any of the other thousand articles and hundreds of thousands of comments and correspondences and books and all else that I have provided for everyone, understand it now, reread it as often as necessary, and stop asking me to repeat and regurgitate and re-explain over and over and over. This is the information needed. It is not going to change until you make it change. 
I have provided all the instruction as to how you can create the evidence of your true identity as a lawful person. Do it. They, the military government, is under strict obligation to honor your political status under the Geneva Protocols of 1949 and Article 3 thereof makes it a hanging offense for them to do otherwise, but you have to correct your own records and bring their mistake to their attention. They also owe us the Law of Peace, R271611. Time to remind them all of all of the above. The municipal government only gets access to your name and is allowed to mess with you as a result of this mistake initially made by the British territorial government, so the hammer ultimately descends on the British territorial United States government for setting you up and offering the municipal government access to your name under the false presumption that you are or ever were a British territorial United States citizen, we are talking here about the plenary municipal United States government run by Congress and allowed under Article 1 Section 8, Clause 17 being being able to buy your proper name as chattel from the Brits. If you look at Title V, Sections 501, 502, you will see that the British territorial government literally sells its citizens for a stipulated price. These offenses against God and man require swift and determined action, but this fraud has been going on a long time and many people think that their personal profit is tied up in preserving this system, many more continue to mistake it as something American when it's not. As people wake up and realize that the federal government is literally foreign and always has been with respect to us, and that it is functioning as a criminal corporate enterprise on our shores instead of obeying the law of our land jurisdiction, we have to take appropriate action to save ourselves and to save our country from our own employees, which most certainly includes the military. Once you realize the scam and take exception to it, your first job is to get certified copies of your birth certificate and two credible witnesses have reasonable first-hand knowledge that you are the living man or woman whose birth event resulted in the BC being issued. Your second job is to reclaim your stolen identity. You do that by placing evidence of your true political standing and lawful person capacity on the public record. That's the whole paperwork process, reconveying the presumed legal person and permanently domiciling it on the land and soil of your state of the union is called lawfully converting it, moving it home to the land and soil of this country instead of allowing anyone to presume that you are acting as a ward of a British territorial government. Serve notice that you have returned home to your birthright political capacity as a lawful person and anyone failing to recognize that fact as fully and 100% commercially, morally, and materially liable for any attacks, acts of insubordination, false claims in commerce, or attempts to impersonate you from now on. This includes every district attorney, every United States attorney, every state of state and state of state governor, governor, plus the U.S. Secretary of State and the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury and the military base commanders in your area and every lawyer from here to South Africa. They all need to hear this and they all need to hear from you. Pulling them up by their own bootstraps and with prejudice is the order of the day. I don't mean that you are uniquely responsible for this vast process of giving notice, I mean that all Americans who are not federal employees need to do this, en masse, in every small town and county and city and borough and district nationwide. You take responsibility for spreading the word in your area and I take responsibility for spreading it in mine. Your third job is to help organize and join your state assembly. The actual state assemblies haven't been called in a 150 years, so don't think that this process or this organization has anything to do with any state of state assembly you have ever heard of or participated in. Those are look alike, sound alike, fakes promoted as a means to confuse and co op genuine efforts to put an end to this. The British territorial United States government has participated in one of the most massive human trafficking, kidnapping, conscription, unlawful conversion, inland piracy, and organized racketeering schemes in world history, and it has conspired against us, against our states of the Union, and ultimately against the constitutions which allow these corporations to exist and operate on our shores. If any American deliberately acting in any offshore legal person capacity whatsoever connected with the federal government entities or their state of state franchises operating in our states of the union reads this, all members of the military, all members of the federal civil service, all members operating state of state or state of state franchises, all subcontractors including those employed by the alphabet soup agencies, this is your notice of liability and your warning and your instruction regarding this situation and your obligation to correct it 
Senate as well as your obligation to recognize the political status of the American state nationals and American state citizens and their states of the Union to which you owe good faith service and honor and duty and protection against all enemies both foreign and domestic. We are the civilians and we operate the civilian government that you owe all duty and honor and loyalty to. You are not under contract to the civil municipal government. Note the difference, civilian versus civil. If any American who is not a federal employee reads this, this is your notice and warning, too. Get up on your feet and get moving. Get those certified birth certificates ordered. Get your two witnesses' testimony. Get your paperwork done and recorded. Get your state assemblies properly populated by Americans operating in their singular capacity as lawful persons. The American states do not allow dual citizenship. It's all or none. Boot it up. If this country is lost to a bunch of European flim-flam artists and crooked scum bankers making false claims in commerce against us, it's nobody's fault anymore but yours and mine for our own failure to react and get organized and kick legal rump from here to breakfast. This is your grandma talking straight talk. I have no reason to lie to you about any of this and you can easily observe it and look it up and prove it for yourselves. Get moving. There is power in numbers. Tell your friends, your neighbors, literally all your countrymen. And if you can, send a donation to the cost of fronting the diplomatic, legal, research, educational work, and other outreach that the living law firm and the United States of America the unincorporated version thereof, and the state assemblies have to do. Donations can be made directly via our websites, www.anavonrights.com, www.americanstatesassembly.com, www.signanamerica.com. Donations to me and the legal team, and money for our educational publications effort, can be made directly to me either by PayPal, avanavon at gmail.com or by snail mail at Anna Maria Riesinger, C.O. Box 520994, Big Lake, Alaska, 99652.